This is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. This isn't the first time we've visited this thing, but since then we've been in and out of a lot of other EVs. So let's revisit what might be the most complete EV under 50 grand. It's good to be back behind the wheel of the Mustang Mach-E. The unit that we had last summer was a pre-production model. So what we're gonna do today is assess how they've worked out some of the bugs and how it stacks up to some of the more, more recent EV showings that we've tested lately. A little housekeeping at the top of the video here. This Mach-E is the premium with dual motor all wheel drive. And what that means is 268 miles of range. If you go for the rear wheel drive model, you can get up to 303 miles. But there's a big benefit of having the dual motor all wheel drive version here, especially since there's a Mustang on the front and rear of this thing, and that's power. You have 346 horsepower and 428 pound feet of torque. This thing is pretty quick, zero to 60 in just under five seconds. Of course, the rear wheel drive version only has one motor and a lot less power. But in this car, you get three drive modes to choose from, and they have the strangest names. Whisper is your eco mode, Engage is your normal mode, and Unbridled is your sport mode. And of course, each mode has a direct impact on how the car behaves when you're on throttle, but it also has a direct impact on how the car behaves when you come off the throttle. For example, in Unbridled mode, that's the sharpest, most, most quick feeling mode when you're on the, the right pedal, I guess I should say. But when you come off the right pedal, you do get this sense of, of regeneration, like the car is trying to slow itself down, use the friction from the brakes to recoup some of that energy that it, you just expelled while you were driving spiritedly. In Whisper mode, though, it's much different. The power comes on a lot slower, a lot smoother, a lot more relaxed. And when you come off the throttle, there is absolutely no friction, no like no retardation at all. Unlike you would get in something like an internal combustion car where you have the engine speed that then slows the car down. And of course, this is really nice because if you don't have it in one pedal drive, you can just coast and coast and coast seemingly for decades. However, it does have a little bit of a trade-off at slower speeds. Typically what I've found when I took this thing to like Costco or whatever, at slower speeds around parking lots, when you come off of the throttle in whisper mode, the fact that it doesn't slow down at all is a very foreign feeling, which means then it almost feels like the car is speeding up, which is horrifying when you're around other people and pedestrians. So that what you have to do then is use the actual brake pedal. And the brake pedal is pretty bitey and you have to get into it a little bit to get any of the, the stopping power. So what it results in is kind of a jerky experience. So it's almost as if the car wants you to drive in one pedal driving. I would be very interested to see a case study between uh, max range or you know what maximum mileage you can do between somebody who just lifts and coasts a lot versus somebody who's using the one pedal driving. Of course, the solution to this issue is to either put the car in engage or unbridled mode, or turn on one pedal driving. Regardless of mode, the power comes on relatively smoothly and you can toggle on or off the propulsion sound. I like to leave it on because it adds a little theater and drama to it. But if you wanna to toggle the propulsion sound off and you find yourself a nice smooth piece of pavement, which is impossible in Milwaukee, but if you do end up finding one, it is incredibly quiet and relaxed in here. The visibility is fantastic. The ride is supple. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say that it has a more supple or refined ride than an Ionic 5, but this is a Mustang, and it does something better than the Ionic 5, and that's handling. The steering feels sharp and quick. None of these EVs offer a lot of feedback, and this one is no different, but the weighting is good, the precision is good, the body stays flat in a corner, and it almost gives you the sense the car wants you to drive it hard. It's pretty fun. So yeah, this car is pretty fun to drive, but there's an even faster and more engaging GT trim above this if you want more power and a more Mustang experience, I guess you could say. But what you have here, especially in this premium, is possibly one of the best ways to get yourself from A to B that you could possibly buy. And that's helped in large part due to the autopilot system. We've tested a lot of autopilot, autopilot systems here on Downshift, and this has to be one of the best. The north side of Milwaukee, where I live, is riddled with construction right now. Like, you can't go anywhere without running through uh, diverging traffic patterns and barrels and stuff. And even with the autopilot, the lane keep, whatever you want to call it, with all that stuff on, this thing did not skip a beat. 
um, you know, changing in temporary road lines, weaving in between barrels, you know, following and adapting speed in front of cars and trucks and all sorts of stuff, dirty roads with gravel and all that stuff on the road. This thing did phenomenally well at keeping me in my lane, keeping me a safe distance from the car in front and not ping-ponging back and forth. I'm very impressed with the driver assist or autopilot system in this Mach-E. Comprehensively then, this Mach-E does it all behind the wheel. It's sharp, dynamic, and fun to drive as the badge suggests. It's got great visibility, smooth power, and a quiet ride when you want it dialed back. And it's got a fantastic safety suite. So with that, let's step outside and chat about some important details. All right, this one, like the one last summer, is red. It's a very nice red. There's a lot of dimension to it. The paint looks good. However, I'm just a little tired of red press cars. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But let's talk about the look of this thing. Up front here, it's very Mustang. You've got this bulging hood. It's very aggressive. You have these, you know, three-piece running lights. It's very Mustang in that way. Uh, of course, you have your badge up front. I don't think there's a single Ford badge, not that I've seen anywhere, uh, except for the top of the windshield here. Uh, and of course the glass is always branded, but uh, that's really it. It's mostly Mustang badges here. Of course here, there's no grill um, because it's an EV and this would be black if it were the GT trim. But t down here in your lower valence, you have these little slats and they're active aero. So they're closed now and they will be closed most of the time to improve aerodynamic airflow. They will open if the motors need to be cooled. The system will tell you or it will tell the car that and it will do it automatically. Around the side here, you have 19 inch wheels. They're a two-tone black and silver. They look pretty good. Uh, not as good as the GT flower power wheels, but that's beside the point. And then they're wrapped in Michelin Primacy AS tires. They do a good job kind of balancing performance and grip while not sucking up a bunch of your range. The more grippy you have of a tire, obviously is better for performance, but it will hurt your range. So these do a good job kind of balancing that. Then you have this black gloss painted uh, wheel arch. It's not a flat, scratchy black plastic, so I'm okay with it. And then the, the smartest thing is they put the charging port on the front of the car. I pull into my driveway or my garage forward, as most people probably do. So it makes sense to have the charger at the back of the garage where typically people have their outlets. And then as we kind of continue down the profile of this thing, the design is very simple. I'm glad that they didn't overstyle it. It makes a lot of sense. It gives the paint a chance to shine. You do have black mirror caps and you have this uh, little badge here, Mach E4X, just essentially signifying that it's the all wheel drive dual motor version. Um, but here is one of my favorite things. And it's, we've driven a lot of EVs in, in the recent months and seeing how different manufacturers deal with the nuisance or the liability of door handles is always really interesting to me. You have people like Tesla who have the uh, door handles that pop out and then of course you run into issues with icing and you know people can't get into their cars and that's a whole thing and then we were in the BMW iX earlier this week and it had like a pocket where you just stuck your stick your hand in uh, and then pull on something on the inside so Ford has gone for a totally different thing. They have a button here that you push and then there's a little tab on the front door. Interestingly enough though, you're probably concerned about the back door which doesn't have a tab. So you just push the button, the door opens a little bit and then you have to put your hand in to open it the rest of the way. And I get you're probably concerned like, oh, well I'm gonna put my hand in here, I'll slam my hand, you know, fingers will get hurt, whatever. It won't do it until you actually pull the door out a little bit further and then it'll close. But if you just push the button, put your hand in, and then try to slam your hand in the door, it won't do it. Same thing with the front door. So that is a nice feature. And then as we talk about the design a little bit more, it has the sloped back. And I really don't like it in things like the BMW X4 or the Mercedes GLC GLE coupes or things like that. But here on an EV, well, one, I think it looks a little bit better. It's better executed here. And I think I'm more okay with it because it has a practical purpose. These, all these EVs are victim of aerodynamics. So all of the designs have to follow suit. So this is the more aerodynamic shape. That's why most generally all the EVs have the sloped back. So it makes a lot of sense. Around the back here, you have incredibly Mustang taillights. They're the three piece, they're sequential, and then you have a Mustang badge. Uh, and then you have a very simple rear bumper. There's no exhaust, so there's no reason to like par parade around like there would be. So good job on your self-awareness, Ford. But the self-awareness as we get inside, that goes away. Okay, so what I'm on about, and I'll direct your attention right away, is to the center screen here. It's a vertical orientation, and that to me just feels very Tesla. I've seen a lot of other brands do it, Ford does it in some other products, and 
I don't know. I mean, it looks good, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm, I prefer a different style. Uh, they do write the ship, though, in terms of giving you an actual gauge cluster, and it's very simple. It gives you all of the information I could possibly need. I have my range, I have my cardinal direction, I have my vehicle safety status, uh, I have my odometer, and I have my speed, and of course what gear I'm in. That's literally it. Maybe I would want to see my song, but that's pretty much all that I would want. You don't get a head-up display, which, you know, it's a little bit bummer, but you, I think you get one in the GT, so um, all the information that I could possibly want and need is right there in front of me. Of course, it says ground speed under your speed because this is still a Mustang. It's interesting, though, because underneath there you have this Big Brother bar, which is essentially a camera staring at your eyes to make sure you're not falling asleep behind the road. And then, of course, underneath that bar you have your steering wheel, uh, which is, of course, wrapped in leather. And the interesting thing about all the leather surfaces in here, they're all... They all have an element of like squishiness to it. So there's a little bit of squish uh, in the steering wheel. It gives you kind of a, a luxurious sense. It's in the door cards, you get the squishiness. And of course, in the seats too. I should mention the, uh, the steering wheel itself is heated and then you have three level heated seats in the front as well. Uh, and the seats are really, really comfortable, very squishy. They're not gonna hold you in like a really bolstered sports seat, but that's what you get in the GT. What you have here is a, what I think is a very comfortable seat and that squishiness plays into it. It's very luxe and very plush feeling. Oh, and I should mention, as we were talking about the steering wheel, there isn't a Ford badge on here. Again, there's not really a Ford badge anywhere in here, but it's a Mustang badge on the steering wheel. And of course, that's right next to uh, all of your driver assistance suite stuff on the left, and then your you know volume and song skip and stuff on the right. So, And as we're talking about some of the song selection and the volume, you do have a Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is pretty good. Uh, it's kind of like synthesizing a sound bar across the dash. It's not real, but you do have speakers in the dash, in the door card, and they all have this like this kind of like cool canvas or like cloth covering to it. All the materials in here are impressive. I will absolutely say, especially for an all black Ford interior, they've done a fantastic job with some contrast stitching, some fake carbon fiber plastic, uh, and this like weird cloth material. So it is very nice in here. But of course, the main event and the thing that you're gonna spend most of your time interacting with in here is the big screen. Uh, it's vertical and you know we talked about that a second ago but the cool thing is you have the volume knob integrated into the screen itself with a touch uh, power on and off button inside the volume. It's just kind of cool the way that they've done that. It's also really smart the way that they've integrated some of the HVAC controls. Your heated seat, heated steering wheel, and all of your climate stuff is always on the screen. Uh, so since you're not going to have hard physical buttons, the fact that they're always there, it's super easy to navigate to. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. They've integrated that really well. Uh, you also have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, I did have some disconnecting issues in the pre-production model last year. I haven't had any of that with this one, so they've taken care of that, which is great to see. In terms of the actual graphics and the stuff in the head unit, it's quick to respond, the colors are good, the brightness is good, even in harsh midday sunlight. Uh, you do have 360 cameras and some reversing sensors, uh, and the, the resolution is very good. There's absolutely no complaints with that whatsoever. But then when we talk about things like storage and that sort of thing, uh, below your big screen you do have this like center area uh, which is very typical from an internal combustion car. This is where your transmission tunnel would be, but you have this wireless charging pad. It's still one of the best. It holds your phone in there really well. It always charges. You're not constantly fidgeting with it to make it charge even through a case. Um, so that has been fantastic. You have additional storage for your wallet. You have USB-C, USB-A, dual cup holders. And unlike the BMW iX, they are not obstructed by the area where you would have your gear selector. Behind the cup holders, you, well, you won't fit the downshift water bottle of truth, but you know, that's par for the course these days. Uh, behind that though, you do have the stitched leather piece with your gear selector here. It's the classic Ford spinny wheel. You have your parking brake, uh, your parking assist control, and your hazard lights right there. So it's a very simple, very minimal design. Behind there is where you get a lot of your storage. So you have this, uh, this elbow rest here which is nice and it's padded because it's leather. And then you have some storage underneath. You've got a 12 volt uh, and then your center console with a sliding tray. And I guess the last thing that I'll mention up front here is the funky door release. So it's not just on the outside, it's on the inside too. Uh, it's kind of forward where you almost like you, you grab it or you grasp it and then that opens it, but rather than in, in the F-150 where you grab it from the side, you kind of grab it from the front and pull on this trigger, which opens the door, which is kind of cool. Um, but one of my favorite things in this car is the huge panoramic sunroof. It does not have a shade that rolls through and it doesn't have that like electro glazing like you would get in like a McLaren GT or a Toyota Venza. It's weird, I always bring up those two because they're incredibly different cars and they have the same feature. Um, but it's nice, There's, it's UV tempered, it doesn't bring in a whole lot of heat, but it does bring in some light, which is really, really nice. Um, the back seats, again, this is an electric car, so you have a huge amount of space back there. There's not a transmission tunnel or a drive shaft 
tunnel uh, in the back taking up foot space. The seats are you know, just as squishy and comfy back there as they are up here. Um, and it's a really nice place to spend time. You still have that B&O kind of cool speaker covering in your door card. And then when you talk about the trunk, it's really nice. It's totally usable. You have this uh, you know, hidden compartment underneath. So ultimately with this interior in mind, like we said behind the wheel, this is a great thing to get you from A to B. And this interior is a great place to be in while you get there. So I think that's a good time to head into the final thoughts. So that's the full production spec Mustang Mach-E. We just got out of the Ionic 5 and the EV6 is coming in two weeks and we'll produce an in-depth comparison series between those three and the ID4. But this Mach-E, as it stands, irrespective of the dumpster fire that is the public charging infrastructure, is a fantastic way to spend 50 grand. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.